Hello, today in today's video we're going to be learning about how to prove whether or not triangles are congruent. So we're going to start by looking back at what we do know. We know information about congruent triangles. If I give you a statement that triangle ABC is congruent to XYZ, we know that all corresponding parts are congruent. So I look at the order of the pieces. Angle A is congruent to angle X based on its location in the statement. The statement is really important. And that means that since B comes next, angle B is congruent to angle Y. And last, that means angle C is congruent to angle Z. A triangle has three congruent corresponding angles and three corresponding congruent sides. As I look at the sides, I see that AB are my first two letters and XY. So AB is congruent to XY. And I follow suit. The next two are BC and YZ. So segment BC is congruent to YZ. And last, AC and XY. So segment AC is congruent to segment XZ. Right, so again, when triangles are congruent, there are six pieces of corresponding congruent parts. Corresponding means they're in the same location on the other one. Now the good news is when I am proving triangles are congruent, I don't have to prove all six pieces are congruent to each other. I only have to show that there are a certain three sets of corresponding pieces that are congruent. So once I show a certain three, I get three for free. The first method of proving triangles is congruent is side, side, side. That means I have three sets of corresponding congruent sides. So I can see all corresponding pieces are congruent and they're all sides. So SSS, side, side, side. When I look at the one below this, this is also an example of side, side, side. What we have here though is we have a shared side. When two triangles are sharing a side, we know that side is going to be congruent because of the reflexive property. It's congruent to itself. It's the same piece. So of course it's going to be congruent. So that would be side, side, and then side. So three sets of corresponding congruent sides. The next method is side angle side. Notice about the order of the pieces. The key to this one is that the angle is going to be the included angle. It's going to be trapped between the two congruent sides. So if I say that this side is congruent to this side and this side is congruent to this side, I have those two S's. I have the side and the side. What I need is the included angle, the angle that is trapped in between those two sides. So again, side angle side is about having that angle trapped between the two sets of corresponding congruent sides. And the last example with side side side, we talked about where does that third piece come from? So here is my congruent sides. Here are my congruent angles. I have that reflexive property again. This side is shared between the two, so I can see side, angle, side. When proving triangles congruent, sometimes the triangles are touching and sometimes they're not. So you just have to look at what you have going on in that particular triangle. The third method is angle, side, angle. So here we need two congruent corresponding angles and the included side. So the side trapped between the two angles. So notice how important it is to know the difference between an angle and a side. All right, so we're going to have two congruent angles. So let's say this is our first set of congruent angles. This is our second set of congruent angles. 
In order to be angle side angle, I need the side that is trapped between the two angles, so that included side. We can see this on the overlapping triangles here, not on the overlapping, the connecting, that shared side, that's that reflexive piece. So we have angle, side, angle, where the side is trapped between those two congruent corresponding angles. Our fifth method, our fourth method, sorry, is angle, angle side. Often, angle side angle and angle angle side get mixed up together because they both need two angles and one side. But it's about how those pieces order. If I'm looking at the first one, I need angle side angle so the side is in between the two angles. Here I want two angles and the side not trapped. So let's say I say this angle is congruent to this angle and this angle is congruent here. I need to choose a side. I actually have a couple options here. The only one I don't want to choose is this side right here because this side would be trapped between the two angles. Otherwise I can choose whatever I want. So I'm going to say that this side this side is congruent to this side. So we can see angle, angle, side, where the side is not included between those two angles. So the two methods that I feel like are confused the most are angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. So here's that other example of it, angle, angle, side. As you're going around your triangle and you're trying to decide, you're always going to move to the closest piece. So for example, if I'm looking over here, I wouldn't go angle, side, angle. Because if I go this direction, I'm skipping a side, I'm skipping an angle, I'm skipping two pieces. Whereas if I go this direction, I'm only skipping a side here. So I'm not going to go that way. I'm going to go this way. Go to the next closest piece. Now, when proving triangles congruent, there are two methods that do not work. The first one is the dreaded booty theorem. If I look here, no ASS, there's no swearing in math class. So I am not going to write down ASS as a, as a method. The booty theorem is not going to work for you. What this looks like is an angle, a side, and then another side. Because as you go to start writing that down, you're like, ooh, mm, that is not good. We are not going to write down the dreaded booty theorem. ASS is not enough information. So when we said you need three pieces, there's certain three that you need, and that is not going to be one of them. The other method does not work is angle, angle, angle. So three sets of corresponding angles that's actually how you're going to show that triangles are similar to each other, which are dilations of each other. The angles are still congruent, but the side lengths are changed by that scale factor. All right, so let's go ahead and turn over to the back side. Label the diagrams according to the givens, then identify the congruent triangles and name the postulate that we use. So I see here, I am given, my first piece of information is that E is the midpoint of AC. So if here is E, here is segment AC. If E is the midpoint, we know what a midpoint does is it divides the segment into two congruent segments. I don't know anything about segment BD, so I only can mark that. The second piece is that EB, oh, spoke too soon, EB is congruent to ED. So I know that because of this. So right now, I have a set of congruent sides. I have a, oh, another set of congruent sides. I only have two pieces of information. 
you have to come up with a third, but you can't choose any one that you want. You can only get things known from the diagram. There are only two things that you can get from a diagram. That is vertical angles or a shared side. If it's not vertical angles or a shared side, you must have some kind of information given to you like I have here. So here are those vertical angles. That's my third piece of information. When I name my triangle, the order of my pieces is really important because when I name that triangle congruency statement, it tells me which angles correspond and which sides correspond. So if I say A, E, B, if I follow that flow, I gotta follow the same flow hitting the same information in the same order. So if I go A to E, that would be C to E and then over to D. So just make sure that corresponding pieces are in the same order when you write your congruency statement. As I look up here, I can see that this is side, angle, side. That is the method proving those triangles congruent. All right, number two, I am given angle B is congruent to angle D. I like those givens. No work for me. BCA. So as I trace from B to C to A, that's this angle right here. DAC is this angle right here. I've used all of my givens, but from those givens, I have one, two sets of congruent information, two congruent angles. I need three. I can't prove triangles congruent without that third piece. So remember what we said, if you're looking at a picture, there's only two things you can see in a picture. One of them being vertical angles and the second one being a shared side. This diagram is sharing that side right there. So that's my third piece of information. When I name my triangles, let's do the top triangle ABC. So if I go from A to B to C, I want to make sure that I'm starting. A over here, A doesn't have a congruent marker. So I'm going to go from C to D to A, making sure that I'm hitting that congruent information in the same order. As I look through, this is angle, angle, side. Notice how the side is not trapped between the two angles. That's why it's not angle, side, angle. Number three, I see congruent angles, congruent sides, and congruent angles. So I've got my three pieces as I name them. So there's lots of ways I could name a triangle. I could name it any way I want. So if I look at this triangle on the left, I could go G-E-M, M-G-E. It doesn't matter how you name the first one, it matters how you name the second one. So let's say I just go G to E to M. The second one has to match up with corresponding congruent information. G, angle G, which is what I started with, is congruent over here to angle O. So since G comes first, O comes first. I then went up to that vertex E and then down to that right angle at M. So hit corresponding congruent pieces in the same order. When I look here, the method is angle, side, angle. That side is trapped between those two angles. All right, number four, the last one for this section. We have this given right here, EI. So that ray EI right there, we know about rays. Bisects the angle, we know angle bisectors, it's bisecting angle REN. So that gave me a pair of congruent angles. An angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. My diagram had marked information with congruent sides, but right now I only have two pieces. We know we need three pieces. The two options are vertical angles or a shared side. This particular triangle 
is sharing that segment EI. So that's my third piece of information. We name our triangles. Let's go a different route this time. Let's go EIR. So that triangle on the left, EIR, top, down, left. So here is congruent to this angle. So I'm going to go here, here, here. So triangle EIN. The method, as I look through my pieces, is side, side, angle, side. Good. So it's all about the three pieces and the order that those three pieces are in your diagram. Determine the additional information needed to prove the triangles are congruent by the method specified. So I see right here, I've got all this stuff marked. I want to know, I want to prove this by angle side angle. So two congruent angles and the included side trapped between them. I'm not saying that the triangles are congruent. I'm saying if they were congruent, what would I still need to know? I do see a set of angles here and a set of angles here. I do see this side, but that's not a good side. It's not trapped. I want the side to be trapped between the two angles. So if I'm looking here, the side that's trapped is this one right here. That's what I need. I don't have it. I need it. So I would need segment BI to be congruent to segment RI if I was going to use that angle side angle postulate. So same diagram, but this time I'm looking for side angle side. So I need two sides and the angle trapped between them. If I look at my diagram, I have a side. I'm missing a side. So which angle should I choose? Which angle is going to be trapped? Not this one. This one's way over here. So I'm going to use this set of angles, side, angle, side. I would also need segment BI to be congruent to segment RI for that side angle side relationship. Last one, we have side, side, side. I need three sets of congruent corresponding sides. Well, I only have one. That means I need two pieces of missing congruent information. I need segment BI to be congruent to segment RI, but I'm also missing this segment down here, segment BD, needs to be congruent to segment DR. All right, that is it for our video today. You learned four different ways to prove triangles are congruent with one more coming tomorrow.